Hey, welcome to the shop. Today I'm doing some TIG brazing with silicon bronze. Now in order to demonstrate this, I put together this cool little cube that gives just quite a bit of practice and is a little more interesting than just brazing together flat coupons. Let's get going. Now in order to build this cube, I'm using some 1 8 inch wall, 2 inch square tubing, and I just cut some 1 inch long pieces. Polished them up with some scotch Brite and cleaned off any residue with a little bit of acetone. Uh, I love that pump acetone dispenser, I'll link it down below. Then once I got them all cleaned up, I lined them up here square and just put some autogenous uh, tack welds on them, which means tack welds without any filler metal. Now while I put this together, let me talk a little bit about the difference between TIG welding and brazing. So TIG welding, you're actually melting the base metal and adding a filler metal that's similar to the uh, base metal composition. Where with brazing, you're just heating up the base metal and melting in a different type of filler. So if you're familiar with soldering, whether it's pipes or wires, it's essentially the same as brazing, except that brazing happens at a higher temperature. So that might help to understand what you're doing. And there are a lot of advantages. You could reduce heat input and distortion. Um, you can fill a bit of a hole and you can weld together dissimilar materials. So a lot of reasons you might uh, want to use TIG brazing. So I've just about got the cube put together here. Um, you can see those tiny little tacks have a little bit of oxidation on them, probably coming from the back side. So I'll just clean them up with a wire brush so I don't carry that into the final piece. So for this first braze joint, I'm going to use some pulse settings. And I'll put all the settings down in the description below. And I just used a lay wire technique with pulse, and it came out okay, but not uh, quite what I was hoping for. But I was thinking I'd go ahead and fill those holes in the corner um, next, so I have something to work off and onto. So in order to do that, I just heated up the, the material and uh, brazed from the corner of one piece there down into that groove. So watch what happened here when I'm doing this right there the filler metal balled up because I got it right into the arc and you don't want to do that in general what you're trying to do is actually get it right into the pool and the hot steel so there's a little bit of an oxide there uh, I'll have to clean off and uh, try not to do that again so let's see if we can't get a little bit better every time so here I'm gonna go off of the pulse settings and I'm gonna go ahead and dab so I'm heating up that tack that I had at the corners until it melts and I get a pool. And once I do, you can see I'm using a little bit of a forward and back motion, right? And so I'll pull my uh, filler rod out and advance forward. Here's a different view. And then that pushes the puddle. Then I add filler to that puddle while I pull the torch back. So I avoid getting up in there and melting the filler off before I get right into the puddle. So let's take a look at how that looks. So here you go, you can see it looks pretty good. Um, I'll go ahead and brush it off a little just to brighten it up and help see, so uh, not too bad. Now let's go ahead and go back to the pulse settings. And here you can see it takes a few pulses to get things warmed up and uh, melted. So with this, it's a similar technique and I'm just advancing forward in between each pulse and then as it pulses, the puddle will grow out forward and I retract back a little and add that rod right into that puddle. So, so the key is you're not trying to melt that base metal, you're just trying to uh, heat it up and the puddle will advance forward and then get the torch out of the way while I add that filler material. So let's take a look at uh, this uh, joint here. And as I clean it up, you can see it looks pretty similar to the others. I'm getting a very similar result all the way around. Let's just look at a couple more clips of this pulse brazing. So it uh, will heat up, and again, just that same step forward motion. And I think the pulse helps to maintain and, and keep pace. It'll uh, help out a little bit, too, if you're welding in awkward positions to let you kind of reposition in between each pulse. So uh, there's no necessarily right or wrong way to do it. These are just two ways that I tried today. Hey, well, thanks for tuning in today. If you liked this video, go ahead and let me know by hitting that thumbs up below. And we'll see you next time.